So Pastor Jesse Lee Peterson has some controversial things to say on the Dr. Phil show. And I wanted to give you my take on this uh, video. We're going to respond to it in a moment here. But first off, he had some good things to say at the beginning. He talked about how he had seven sisters and six brothers, how he grew up with two parents, how he believes in the family values and how we have to have two parents in the home. I was all for that. I was like, great stuff. You know what you're talking about. But then he just went down the hill pretty quickly. And we're going to play the clip. Let's go ahead and roll that clip and we'll react to it. Elon Musk has been tweeting about the Earth's alleged underpopulation crisis. But should we be concerned? We've agreed that it's not birth rate that's causing any kind of climate change. It's not the driver, at least, that's for sure. You think it should be people should qualify and be tested. You think people should be tested. You think we should just feed them and let them <laughs> age I, out. Voluntarily. Yeah, right. I mean, so as a society, I mean, we value freedom and the, you know, reproductive choice is one of those freedoms. And I think the better approach is to try to educate people um, so that they're responsible when they have children and they can care for them. But I mean, I think having the government getting involved in anything like this, I mean, China's done that. It's a disaster over there. I completely agree with you about reproductive freedom. I think that's the most important thing we need today. Hundreds of millions of couples are denied their right to not procreate. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, you were mentioning how, how's how that? Oh, how go are, ahead. How are they denied that right? Uh, they do not. They do not have the uh, contraceptive services, reproductive health services that they need. Those are not uh, provided. And maybe people should supply their own, but they can't afford it because they're having more offspring that they can't feed. Where, where is that? Just about everywhere. Try to get a uh, sterilization here in America when you haven't had kids and you're only 22. That's true. We're, we're not allowing people to we, not breathe. You see people like that all the time and you can put an IUD in, a copper IUD is effective for 10 years, it's inert. Have you ever walked in effective. a grocery store and seen a a uh, lady with a bonnet on her head with eight kids walking behind her. You think that she's being responsible? You think that she's really taking into consideration what she's supposed to do responsibly? You think that she's not on Section 8 housing? You don't think that we paying for her to house her kids who's probably gonna grow up and steal my wheels off my car? I, uh, I disagree with all this crap that I hear. I grew up with six brothers and seven sisters at a time when you know, I grew up on a plantation in Alabama, and we grew up in a little hut house, bathroom outside. And we, my family uh, raised an amazing family, children. But what the difference was then than it is now is that before you had babies, you got married. So you have the father and the mother in the home. And while the father was out earning a living, the mother was watching over his children. And so you were able to raise decent children. We didn't have government in our lives at the time. And so we were able to do that. And in America, we were not allowing all these illegal aliens and refugees to come into our country. So our government were not taking care of folks from other parts of the world and the families in America. We took care of ourselves. I think you've pretty much pissed off everybody. <laughs> um, but it, you, you, said, you, you said there's not anything you've heard that you don't think is crap, so what do you think? think you said need, what you don't think, what do you think? I know that we need to restore the family. We need a smaller government because government don't make anything work. They screw you up. We need to stop taking care of women who are having these babies out of wedlock. Correct. We need to stop taking care of these women who are coming from other countries. We need to stop taking care of their babies. But we need to take care of American families first by getting them away from the government and restoring order. Okay, you're, you're a pastor, right? Yes. And you're a radio host? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and you said you believe white people should have more children? We definitely need white babies. And I tremble at the idea that white babies, that the white uh, group is going down in numbers because if you lose white folks, America, it's over for America. Because if you notice, white people tend to be more innovative. They're more creative. They, they have ideas about things. All these other races don't do nothing but destroy. 
They don't build. But they he's destroy. Wrong. He's wrong. I said you'd piss off everybody. I was wrong. Now you pissed <laughs> off everybody. You As know? you can see there, this man had a lot of controversy in some of the statements he made. <laughs> and the reaction from the crowd was just, it was just priceless to me. Now, he said some very interesting things and some pushback I'm going to have with the statements he made. He said that the government should stop taking care of women who have babies out of wedlock, even in America, which I thought to myself, OK, don't you want to take care of the people in your country? And let's just not move past that. Let's think about this in a critical aspect. So let's just say the woman has a boyfriend and they have a kid and he decides to break up with her and move on. What is she supposed to do in that scenario? What if she's relying on him to take care of her? before you know they had a kid and now they got this baby and he just has cold feet what is she supposed to do you know what if she's working already and she just needs some more assistance she you know she's doing what she can and with the knowledge she has she just needs a little bit more help and the reason why I'm giving this so much pushback because you know some of us have been unemployed and we've applied for unemployment just to take care of things around the house right Let's be honest. Some of us have relied on the government when we actually needed it. We can't just say, stop taking care of them. What if they actually need the help? There's a verse in James 1.27 that says that, you know, the fatherless and the widows who are afflicted, we should be visiting them. And that's my pushback is we should be showing compassion. I'm not condoning her behavior, but we got to balance grace and truth at the same time. Yes, they should be making better choices. However, they need better alternatives. If all they have is the government, what are they supposed to do? They need to have some education. They need some guidance. I'm not saying that they shouldn't take responsibility, but if they already are taking responsibility with the knowledge that they have, then they need better alternatives. So that's my first pushback. The second thing he said is that we need more white babies and that whites are more innovative. I was like, do you not know there's other actors, other musicians, there are painters, and other cultures who are very creative, very um, you know, entrepreneur-like, and are doing a lot in their communities. So I was like, okay, that's a bit racist <laughs> to say oh, white people are just more creative. It's very ignorant and out of line. The third thing I just didn't understand was he said that all races, besides white people, are destructive. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So you're saying blacks, Asians, Indians. Hispanics are just more destructive. And I just, you know, I looked up a couple of things, you know, when it comes to the Indian culture and, you know, they talk about how they're, you know, doctors and they're, you know, trying to become, you know, more educated. And you see this life. You, If you know um, Indian people, they are all about education. They're all about family traditions and values. And I love that about them. I really do. And I, I commend them. I, I totally respect them for that. And you see them, you know, working hard and trying to, you know, make it in America. And I love that about them. They're really taking advantage of the opportunities in front of them. So to say like they're trying to destroy everything, that's very stupid. And then I looked up, you know, Asian Americans that they actually have a net worth of almost a million dollars back in 2021 that, that was reported. I'm thinking to myself, all right, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Clearly doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to just other cultures. And I just thought, you know, he was going off on a random tangent and not really having a solution to the problem. And that brings me to the Roe v. Versus Wade situation. You know, people are excited about the law being passed, but here's my pushback towards that. Great, you have a law in place, but are you really solving the problem? Because we have to look at the root of the situation. If you aren't changing hookup culture, if you aren't fixing education on sex, education on relationships, you're not solving the problem. I don't care how many laws you put in place. If you aren't really fixing what's really going on, abortions are still going to happen. Babies are still going to come forth. And I looked up the statistic of Christians. They actually have, uh, they represent 5% of adoptions in America when it comes to kids who just need parents. And that's great. I, I think they say they doubled the rate of um, people who, who adopt. And that's an awesome thing. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is you're not going to really change anything if they're just having one night stands, if they don't understand the consequences of having sex, the consequences of a relationship when you don't really work on things together. If they don't understand those things, you're going to keep repeating the same cycle over and over again. I don't care what law comes into play. You're not going to change anything because if people are still hooking up with each other and having babies, what are you really fixing? You know, that was my 
pushback when that law got passed. I think we have to really look at this deeper and find better solutions. So what's a good solution to helping people who actually really can't financially take care of that kid? Because there's a cost in that. Well, the first thing we, we got to do as you know people in society and as Christians, we got to get better with our finances. We have to understand how money really works. The second thing is we got to level up our skill set. We got to learn to create. We got to build skills so we can be more valuable in the job market. Because if you have more income, guess what? You can do more with it. But complain about inflation, complain about the president, complain about abortions, all these problems isn't going to solve anything. So we got to bring solutions to the table and not complain. Listen, awesome. The law got passed. But are you really solving the problem? Because if the behavior is not changing, nothing's going to change. Nothing. I don't care how many laws are passed. So that's my take on this. I just thought I'd give you my perspective. If you like it, make sure you like the video. Make sure you leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.